Hello friends, this video on electrochemistry part 23 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So as per Kolrosh law, if you take a strong electrolyte, the blue one is my strong electrolyte and the green one is my weak electrolyte. This we just saw strong electrolyte, for example KCl and weak is like uh, acetic acid. So for a strong electrolyte, If you see, here we are increasing dilution, here we are making it more concentrated. So if you go from right to left, we are diluting the whole solution. That means if you see going from left to right, when you are diluting, the lambda is increasing, right. So molar conductivity increase slowly on dilution. This dilution is in this part. And for that, he gave an equation that is lambda m at guinea point is nothing but this is value at infinite dilation minus a c to the power 1 by 2. c is a constant, c is a constant, or a is a constant and C is the concentration and the value of A depends on the solvent actually right for example if you see it depends on the pair for example NaCl and KCl will have same value of A it depends on the number of ions it produces actually okay for example NaCl KCl will produce two ions each CaCl2 will produce one ion of two positive charge and two ions of one negative charge, right? MgCl2 will be doing the same thing. So they'll have same value of A. MgSO4 will produce one ion of plus two charge and this ion of negative charge. Calcium sulfate also will have, will produce one ion of plus two charge, Ca plus two and SO4 minus two. So this will have same, these two will have same value of A, this two will have same value of A, this will have same value of A. This A depends on my solvent actually, correct? I mean the number of uh, the types of cations and anions it produce. So all the electrolytes they'll have same of particular type will have same value of A. Correct? But if you talk about the variation of molar conductivity of a weak electrolyte in this case, that is not a linear function. You see this is not a linear function, this is a linear function. Correct? This is not a linear function. See, it goes something like this. It's not a linear function. Okay. So the evaluation of this molar conductivity at infinite dilution, the moment you keep diluting, you want to find the value of conductivity here, molar conductivity here, it's not very certain. And for this, he proposed one more law. He proposed that at infinite dilution, at infinite dilution and this is for weak electrolytes or in fact for all actually this is for all at infinite dilution the cations and anions since it is infinitely dilute they move independently of each other They move independently of each other in the solution and this idea was discovered by Carl Roche in 1875. In 1875 he thought of this idea. To prove this what he did was he measured the molar conductivities of strong electrolytes. Please note he took strong electrolytes and since I am talking about infinite dilution, he talk, he took strong electrolytes at infinite dilution. Right? He did that and let's see what the result was. 
So he did the research and he found that the molar conductivity for the pairs of salt having a common ion is approximately same. That this lambda m, the difference in lambda m actually, the difference in lambda m for pairs of salt and that pairs of salt should have one common is same, approximate. For example, he has taken Ki and Nai pair. Found the difference. He took KBr and NaBr pair. He found a difference. He took KCl, NaCl, sorry. Yeah, KCl, NaCl pair. He found a difference. He took KNO3, NaNO3 pair. He found a difference. And he found a difference of lambda. So he found that for Ki NaI pair, for all these actually, the value came out to be approximately 23.4 Siemens centimeter square per mole. What you observed is that means if you see here, if you take remove ii, you get k minus na. You remove br br because I'm subtracting, you get k minus na. You remove cl cl, you get k minus na. No3 no3 remove, you get k minus na. So with that, he came to conclude. He concluded that at infinite dilution, the cations and anions contribute independently to the molar con conductivities. Please note. The conclusion he gave was from this experiment was that again since everything is happening at infinite dilution at infinite dilution because at infinite dilution you can find at least find the uh, molar conductivity of a strong electrolyte but for a weak electrolyte you can't find right because they hardly dissociate so at infinite dilution my cations and anions con they contribute independently to molar conductivity of electrolyte. So that was he concluded. Correct. He took other pair also, for example, uh, one pair he took was NABR and NACL and he took KBR and KCL. So if you see this pair now and he found the lambda M and lambda M, you see here NA and A gets cancelled, here KK gets cancelled, right? So in both the case, in both the case, the lambda came out to be 1.8 Siemens centimeter square per mole. Right. So thus he told that the lambda m, that is my molar conductivity, can be expressed as sum of molar conductivities of individuals ions of electrolytes. Because since they are contributing independently, I can say that lambda m can easily be say, uh, replaced as nothing but sum of the molar conductivities of individual electrolytes. And this is nothing but Kolrosch law of independent migration of ion. Kolrosch law of independent migration of ions. Correct. That means, for example, for I have, let's suppose, NaCl at an infinite dilution, right? If you want to find the limiting molar conductivity of NaCl, so that will be nothing but limiting molar conductivity, I'll put it not here of NaCl will be nothing but limiting molar conductivity of Na plus plus limiting molar conductivity of NaCl minus. Just add these two, you get the value. Correct. But for example, you have CaCl2. CaCl2. So in that case, you get two chlorine minus. So it will be Ca2 plus plus 2 into limiting uh, 
molar conductivity of chlorine because you get two chlorine ions and one calcium ion when CaCl2 dissociate. So there's a general rule actually. Let me write that general rule. The general rule is that so if I have an electrolyte that on dissociation gives x cations and y anions, let's suppose. So the limiting molar conductivity of the whole solution will be nothing but x into lambda of cation plus y into molar conductivity of anion. Correct. For example, MgCl2, it will give you one Mg plus one cation and two anion, two chlorine. So it'll be lambda of Mg plus two of lambda of chlorine. It's a general rule actually. So it gives x cations and y anions. Then x into num the molar conductivity of cations because you're getting x number of cations and plus y into molar conductivity of anion because you're getting y number of anions. And this is the molar conductivities, the limiting molar conductivity is actually for cations and anions the popular values at 298 Kelvin. For H plus, this is the value 349 Siemens centimeter square per mole. For Na plus, 50.1 centimeter square, Siemens centimeter square per mole. For K plus, 73.5 Siemens centimeter square per mole. Similarly, for Ca plus, 11.119 Siemens centimeter square per mole. So for, uh, for OH minus, we have this value 199.1 Siemens centimeter square per mole. Similarly, for BR minus, I have this value. You see, for CS3CO minus, we have this value. It depends on the size. You see, CS3CO minus is big in size. Since the anion is this, this ion is bulky, the conductivity is less. H plus is very nimble, very small in size. So in this case, if you see conductivity is almost maximum here. Correct? So it all depends on the size of the ion. Now let's see the Kolrosh law for the weak electrolytes. So as I've told this Kolrosh law of uh, indi this independent migration of ions, this was used for weak electrolytes generally because for weak electrolytes it's very difficult to find the molar conductivity at a very high dilution because at that high dilution the degree of this association is very high right and it's a very uncertain value so the molar conductivity and infinite dilution so let's suppose my it's almost zero concentration is almost zero so in that case, the disassociation of uh, is almost one. That is, let's suppose I take a weak electrolyte. Right, so this is, I'm diluting it. And this is my molar conductivity, right? So I'm at infinite dilution, this, is, this alpha is almost one because this will be, let's suppose C, this becomes 0, 0 at t is equal to 0, this becomes C alpha, this is C into, this becomes C into 1 minus alpha, this becomes C alpha and this becomes C alpha, right? This you have seen in the equilibrium uh, classes, this kind of equations. So at infinite dilution, C is almost 0 and alpha is almost 1. So but at such low concentration, we have told that conductivity of solution is very, very low and it cannot be measured accurately. So we have, we came up with this, uh, Kolrosh came up with this law of independent migration. We say that at any given concentration, I mean, you can just add at infinite dilution, the molar conductivity of this solution is nothing but the molar conductivity of individual ions. Correct. Now, at any given concentration, let, let's assume that we are coming with the new formula now. At any given concentration, if alpha is my degree of disassociation, Correct. So my alpha, I can easily approximate alpha to be the ratio of molar conductivities at that alpha can be this value by this value, not sorry. 
or let's not confuse let's make it lambda m by lambda m naught okay lambda m naught is nothing but my molar conductivity at infinite infinite dilution right where c is almost equal to 0 and this is my molar conductivity at in time c is equal to c some value so i'm saying this association is almost equal to the molar conductivity at a given concentration divided by molar conductivity at infinite dilution so we want to find this k something but cl equal concentration of ch3 co minus concentration of h plus by concentration of ch3 coh this becomes c alpha c alpha c into 1 minus alpha cancel it becomes c alpha square 1 minus alpha just put the value of alpha alpha is nothing but lambda m by lambda m naught c into lambda m by lambda m naught by 1 minus lambda m by lambda m naught this value you'll get if we solve it we get c into lambda m square by lambda m naught lambda m naught by lambda this is what you will get the value of equilibrium constant you can find the value of equilibrium constant using the value of lambda m naught and lambda m that is molar conductivity at infinite dilution and molar conductivity at that point of time where you want to find the value of k so let's see the application of kolros law we have just seen first thing is that it is used to find the value of uh, molar conductivity at infinite dilution for a weak electrolytes at infinite dilution correct for example if you want to find the uh, molar conductivity of CH3COH at infinite dilution that will be nothing but molar conductivity of CH3CO minus at infinite dilution plus molar conductivity of H plus at infinite dilution these values you can actually get in some textbook that is the first application the second application it is used to find the dissociation constant alpha as I told alpha is almost equal to lambda m by lambda m naught correct second thing once I have alpha I can easily find the equilibrium constant c alpha square by 1 minus alpha at least for this equation correct so I can find the dissociation constant I can find the equilibrium constant I can find the value of molar conductivity for a weak electrolyte at infinite dilution Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos. Attempt free online tests, get free study materials, find tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.